Hello folks and welcome back to the Moshix Mainframe channel. This is Moshix and today we have video number 60 and to celebrate I have an extra long opening roll uh, for this video with some fun thermal shots to watch in, uh, in uh, retro mode. And uh, today we're going to be working on actual, honest to god, real iron IBM Z13 mainframe and we're going to be do some benchmarking and see how it compares to uh, Intel CPUs because we're going to be running Linux on both ends. So um, what, we'll, what we'll do is we'll just have some uh, mathematical complex problem and then uh, get it to run on both machines. So first of all, uh, let's just uh, play with the Z13. Um, I have here a Let's get an IBM Z13 mainframe. Let's get a picture. Let's picture what we're working with. Um, so this is how this looks. And um, this cost in the millions. Um, they have up to, I think, about 192 CPUs and several terabytes of memory. Um, there's, of course, already a newer uh, mainframe out there, the Z14 and the Z14S. Uh, they start to call mainframes like iPhones now. I don't know what IBM is thinking, but anyway, that's how they call them now, like iPhones. It's a Z13, Z13S, and then there was a Z14 and the Z14S. Um, but uh, we're working on a Z13. Uh, I would think um, it, it's running at IBM. Um, it's called the Linux IBM Linux One program, um, and everybody can get a well. They do some pre-screening, but um, you can get an account on one of those machines if you apply. I don't know where the link is. I'll find the link and put it in the description below this video so you can also get an account. But um, So first of all, let's see how you log in. They send Once you set up the virtual machine there, they send you an SSH uh, PEM file. And so um, if I use this for the local machine here on the right and this for the mainframe, then I will just do uh, SSH minus two link and then Linux one is my uh, account name on that machine and then C13 why is that not working uh, let's see okay well, I'll just have to put in the IP address okay so we can access it so let's try again minus i use my um, signature for my key file and then uh, linux one at z13 yes oh, okay i have to make the uh, key file only accessible to me it should work now yes so that's it we're in the linux one community cloud um, show you let's make this maybe a little bit bigger to show you that this is oh maybe we'll make the font a little bit smaller I think you should be still able to see it um, okay um, So uh, your name is A, and you see that we're running, this is mainframe architecture, X is for 64-bit, so we're running in 64-bit mode, and uh, the best way to um, do that is to say, um, we test C, uh, To write a little program and then look at the assembler output. Now, if we look at, if 
untuk um, Okay, so we should have, yeah, here it is. Yeah, I test that S. And we see that this is a mainframe assembler. Uh, of course, it's a different notation than the assembler that we use on the mainframe on MBS or VM or VSE, but uh, we all recognize this instructions. Store, uh, branch, these are all these are the data areas here below. So it's, as you can see here, this was done by GCC, the JCC, GCC uh, compiler on uh, SUSE Linux running on this mainframe, but it is mainframe assembler. Um, everything else works kind of the same. Uh, there is some software which does not appear to be available in the mainframe. For instance, I use HTOP here. You all know it, uh, very handy. Um, you don't have htop H -top on uh, the mainframe and if I do zipper which is the package manager install htop uh, this will not um, it will not find the package so the htop does not exist on, uh, on the mainframe architecture um, but let's go see what else we can get out of this machine, more CPU info. And we see it's an IBM S390, uh, machine type is 2964, which is a Z13. And <clears throat> we're running with two CPUs here. And I know for a fact that we're running under ZVM, um, but this is the Bogomips 2035. Let's see what this machine says. Let's make this font also slightly smaller. It's 18, let's make it 16. Okay. Uh, this is info, the local machine here I have on my ESX, VMware ESX cluster. Info. So here we have um, an Intel i7. Uh, this is, I think, a 2017 vintage i7, so quite fast, a 3.5 gigahertz. Um, not a not a slow machine. Um, has all these uh, things, and then here start to see a difference. Here, this is 7,000 Bogomips, even though. It's bogus MIPS, but um, whatever the measure is, it's the same for this kernel, but this is 20,000 bogus MIPS. So it seems to already Linux seems, seems to think that this one is has uh, has a faster processor at boot time. Uh, that's when Linux boots, that's when it computes the bogus MIPS. Um, <clears throat> and then we see that this actually gives us quite a, a bit less information CPU info than on the Intel architecture. Uh, everything that's in the slash proc is actually a virtual file system. So this is a way to look at the kernel, Linux kernel, and get some data out of the kernel. And uh, if you look CPU info, that's not actually a file. It's something, it's we're reading tables from the kernel. It's a virtual file system. Um, it's kind of like what we were doing in the previous video, M58, M59, we were getting in MBS with assembler some data out of the nucleus of the MBS nucleus. So here we're getting the same thing, we're reading the operating system tables uh, through, but everything is always a file in Linux, in Unix, right? And so, of course, Linux uses a file system approach here to get the table data from the kernel. Um, anyway, so this is the machine we have. Um, let's see, we have here four gigabytes of memory, which is enough, and then let's see what we have here. Yeah, that's a six gigabyte virtual machine. And so both, uh, you know, just as a comparison, both are running as virtual machines. So this Linux is running as a virtual machine inside ZVM on the mainframe. And this is running as a Linux virtual machine on top of ESX on a on a, on a, a little machine with uh, this processor here, with the, uh, with the i7567 uh, processor. 3.5 gigahertz so it's it's one of the fastest processes by intel 
Um, what I did here is I wrote a little bit of code. Uh, remove test. Okay, we don't need that anymore. And I have here, I took, as you may know, I always work with the Queens problem. You have a chessboard of n by n squares and you need to place n queens so that none of the queens can threaten it, uh, the other or the others. And I've used this throughout all my channel here. I've done this, I've written this program in PL1 in Assembler, in, in, uh, in Go, in the Go language, uh, which I compared to in the PL1 uh, video um, in this channel and in Rex and in many other languages. And so uh, I wrote the same implementation here. Um, and uh, what I do is I compute with a chessboard of 14, where, with 14 squares by 14 squares with 14 queens. Uh, because it is uh, 14 starts to be a mathematically already um, uh, expensive calculation. Um, there is no recursion here because we backtrack, but we do quite a bit um, of um, looping, and so we exercise kind of uh, the normal instruction set. There's no floating point. Uh, the stack here is not being used uh, uh, a lot. Uh, it's just it's just normal CPU processor. This gives us a good idea of the general processing capability of the processor. So uh, what I'll do is I'll copy this over to this machine. And to do that, I have to say SCP minus E, and then I say Linux one at Z13 root. And what is it called? Queens dot C. Okay, this is what we're copying over, and we'll copy it here. Hmm? Why is that? We have it here. Let's try again, SCP minus I. And then, that's one. Then, root, means to here. Hmm. This is really weird. Permission denied. the log in Suzy Linux, I already know all these distributions make a mess. Everyone is different than the other. Um, I can't. Yeah. So I guess we'll have to do this by hand. Let me figure out how to copy this down because uh, this is too cumbersome to do it like this. Copy and paste. I have to find a way to copy this down. I'll be right back. 
no, yeah, two seconds after I stopped the video, I, I understood what was going on. It's late at night, it's like, what, 2, 20 a.m. and I'm jet lagged. I was, of course, not accessing the right account. I'm Linux one here, not boot. So I need to go to home, Linux one. Okay, so. Uh, so now, I uh, already had some comments from people on, my, on the Moshix uh, uh, channel Facebook page where I already discussed um, uh, the, the Z13 with uh, some of the usual visitors there and already got some messages that I need to turn on, uh, I need to compare apples with apples. Yeah, this is not going to be scientific, it's not going to be deterministic because or anyway, these are virtual machines. Um, and so there's thousands of other images running on this Z13 uh, mainframe. I'm not the only one there. There must be at least another thousand, two thousand, three thousand Linux uh, guests running. Um, and so uh, you know, it's not going to be deterministic. And the same thing on this machine. There's a lot of other stuff running on this machine. And uh, obviously it's not the same architecture. And so don't start shooting at me. And I don't want to start a war here uh, of words. Um, but um, that's what we're going to do. So let's look at this. Looks good. So we're just going to do uh, GCC. I was already somebody said I should use CC. And so I'm using here, of course, GCC version 5.4.0. And here we have 4.3.4 because the mainframe is always a little behind. And, and of course, yes, I know it's not the same compiler, and I know a million improvements I've gone into GCCA, but we're just getting a feeling for it. We're not trying to be scientific here. Um, and so do not shoot at me, please. Um, so we say GCC minus um, 03, uh, minus O queens, and then queens.c. Okay, and we do the exact same thing, so you can see exact same thing over here and of course both worked okay now uh, let's look at so this is uh, 1200 bytes long and this is 1500 bytes long so yeah this is slightly bigger but this has to do with the architecture uh, one more thing we can do is do an assembler because I can read the assembler and see what's going on. So it's initializing stack and all kind of stuff. Yeah, and here is now where we start to execute code. Mm -hmm. Comparing, yeah, trying to find a position. Okay, so uh, this is all very clear. And why don't we do the same over here? What was the command? So we just use exactly the same commands. S. Oops. Where is the queens? Okay, the VI queens. So S. And this is Intel um, assembly. Hmm. Setting up here, and so now we start. Yeah. Starting to compute. Positioning on the board, advancing, checking. Okay, so both have uh, O3 optimization, and now let's see if there's anything else running on this machine. No, there's nothing else running. Okay, so but again, this is not going to be scientific. So we're going to do time queens with 14. Okay, remember this is 14 by 14. Let's see how long this takes. Okay, so this took three seconds 
uh, 3.2 seconds. And we do the same thing here. And this actually took longer. So we have it with 4.8 seconds and this is here 3.2. I had run the test uh, earlier yesterday and with a Mac and two years old iMac with an i7 as well, 3.2 gigahertz i7. And there the iMac was 14 seconds and here it was the same 4.5, 4.7 seconds. And so this is interesting. Um, so here the processor is, seems to be, let's repeat just to, to see if there's any variance. 4.7 seconds. Yeah, very little variance here. So here have more variance because there must be so many thousands of virtual machines running. Yeah, okay, so that seems to be uh, the time. So let's run it with a higher count, uh, please. Let's do it with uh, 16. And then we should have uh, a better understanding. Same thing here. With 16. Okay, what was the command to compile again? Okay, same exact command. And that's the beauty, we're running Linux, we can use the exact same commands for everything. So now we do time, queens, and here we do time, queens. And I press enter here and then switch to the other window here on the mainframe and try to be as close to each other as possible so we get a better feeling. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. So 14 took four seconds. Um, 16 can take uh, a minute or two. Um, what we don't do what we don't do here is as I said there's no recursion, there's backtracking. So basically we're just moving the pieces up and down until we find a solution. Um, and, uh, and so we're just exercising in the general instruction set of the, of the machine. Uh, I hope IBM isn't going to get mad at me for running such an intensive program here. Um, but it's late at night. Um, I hope they don't mind. Uh, otherwise, otherwise they may revoke my account. Um, but let's see. They probably have a warning somewhere for uh, virtual machines that use excessive CPU time. So I'm starting to think maybe it's not such a great idea to do it uh, with 16. Maybe we should have tried 15. But we'll see very soon. Uh, I know that this machine is going to be faster. At the end of the day, um, one thing we need to realize is that um, there is no more such a thing as a mainframe uh, CPU die, um, CPU sync, uh, you know, the, the hard, the, the, the iron, the real iron CPU with the mainframe architecture does not exist. What IBM does is they have power PCs which emulate the instruction sets. And so all mainframe hardware, real mainframe hardware is still running emulated. Um, and uh, they haven't been making a real S390 architecture processors for a long time, um, at least 10 years or so. And so everything is emulated on the power PC on the mainframe. Um, but on the other hand, the power PC um, is running at 4.5 or 4.6 gigahertz. Some will go up to 5 gigahertz, so they're quite a bit faster. Um, but of course, uh, Linux on this machine here is, is faster because it's uh, it's probably better optimized for the Intel architecture. It's been around, they've been doing it for a long time. And also because um, uh, because in, uh, it's, it's real hardware, there's no emulation. Um, and so the thing that people don't realize is that number one, it's running emulated. Number two, uh, since the introduction of LPARs on the mainframe in the mid 90s, I think, around, or actually early 90s, 
yeah, I think 91, 92, that's when I introduced the uh, uh, Prism L part. What, what you don't never really run on the on the mainframe on the on the on the real iron. Uh, um, so here, okay, two minutes and forty nine. Um, you really run on the mainframe. Uh, first of all, it's emulated these days, but second of all, there's a, a, Z, a VM on the processor, and when you start, anything that runs is already second level. Um, because the LPAR is done in software, it's not really a hardware. They make it look like it's a hardware feature, but it's really a software feature. They put a lot of the VM code on the processor, and so you're already running on the second level. And so in this machine here, we have the process, the PowerPC is emulating the architecture. Then we have the LPAR, which is running really just VM code, and then there's ZVM running under it, and then here they have the Linux guest. So all these levels, um, they of course they uh, eat into performance a little bit, um, but it doesn't matter because as, <laughs> once you introduce what I wanted to say is once you introduce uh, something like the LPAR architecture or the or the emulation of the mainframe architecture on the PowerPC, uh, as long as you always keep it like like this and you next generation mainframe is going to be a little bit faster, people compare it just to the one thing they had before. There's no way to compare anymore to machine running without LPARs, and so. If that's what you know, uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna complain. You're not gonna know, and uh, and and that is the you know it's if you boil a frog uh, by increasing the temperature very slowly, uh, the frog will not realize it's uh, it's being boiled, and, and that's what's happening here. It's not a bad thing. I'm not I don't mean it in a bad way, but um, it, but you will not notice that you're actually uh, you know that. 20-25% of the machine is eaten before you even IPL your Linux guest uh, because of all these layers that are on top. And it doesn't matter because each new generation of mainframe is a little bit faster than the previous one and people are happy. Alright, so we got here both results. Uh, 4 minutes and 6 seconds. And we have 2 minutes and 49. And that's with 16. So you can see, it, it you know, the this machine here, which is a... Um, a Intel Nook i7 6th generation. That's what I'm working on here. Exactly this machine here. So, um, <coughs> okay. Performance, full size performance. They're not lying. These machines are fast. It's the dual channel DDR. I have 32 gigabyte on that machine. But again, it's running on the ESX. Uh, we can see here. Uh, it's this machine here. So, uh, two CPUs at 3.5 gigahertz. That's the one machine we just saw. Um, and uh, it is very fast. And uh, and so, and that, this machine, as configured as you saw it here on uh, my ESX, uh, costs about $500, I guess. Uh, 480 500 dollars it's already a year old so you can probably find on ebay for 300 dollars used and uh and yeah it beats uh, of course the mainframe but again this mainframe is running thousands and thousands of, of linux images of of this size of the one that i'm running here and here i have i could run one two three four maybe eight of those the io which we're not exercising here enough um let's see if we can install the io sudo zipper install io bench apt install io bench uh, what is the io bench linux io benchmark there is a benchmark suite for io uh, so let's see there is yeah there's a let's see benchmark factory I'm gonna benchmark I don't okay we can try this as well 
Okay, so he did this um, two gigabytes in two seconds, and here he did it in 12 seconds. I would assume that um, this is because for because this is going to an SSD disk, uh, sorry, an NVMe disk, which is blazingly fast, and it's attached on the local processor bus, and this is uh, probably going on. Uh, Um, yeah, yeah, this is going on a real disk, and so um, it's you can't really compare directly. Um, this doesn't give us a very good understanding. It's just different architecture, but uh, it's just a way for us to play a little bit with this mainframe. Um, I wish we had the high-level assembler uh, on Linux. Um, I know it exists. Uh, the high-level assembler does exist on Linux on the mainframe architecture. But IBM is not making it available here, I don't know why. Um, but uh, everything else that we want to do here would just work. I mean, um, um, that's it, these are our two machines here. Um, so this is a, it's a fuller operating system installation, 160 processes, this is only 76. And uh, this is 6 gigabytes of memory, this is only 4. But other than that, there's really all very, very similar stuff. So that's it. I don't want to make this any longer than it needs to be. I would just I just wanted to give you a feeling for the mainframe. Uh, as you can see, there's hardly any difference. You can't, you couldn't tell the two things apart. One is mainframe. One is one is um, a uh, $400 or $500 Intel Nook, and uh, we saw um, the row processing power difference uh, when it comes to the normal instruction set, no floating point and no funny stuff. Um, and uh, we discussed a little bit about the mainframe architecture, how it's done today, everything is emulated now these days, and it's running in an LPAR, and then uh, on the, the LPAR you would have on a machine like this a ZVM, and then you can run thousands and thousands of virtual machines, 192 processors, and where, where would you get the machine with 192 processor on the Intel architecture, it doesn't exist. So, uh, just fun stuff. I hope you had fun watching this, thank you very much for watching, and uh, please do subscribe to the Moshix mainframe channel. Um, and if you like this particular video, press on the thumbs up button. Also, uh, come visit us on the Facebook page, the, I will link um, in the description below this video, as well as on the Discord uh, chat channel where we have lively discussions all day long. Thank you very much. Goodbye.